Right, welcome to this video. Uh, about a month ago I watched a video on the Caravan Nuts channel. Martin on the Caravan Nut did a video about something called Caravan ID. Now uh, it's a theft prevention system I guess and in spite of its name I was quite interested. Uh, Caravan ID it could have been Caravan and Motor Arm ID, but it would have been a bit longer, I suppose. But I was quite interested in, in anything, really, that can help prevent theft of our vehicles. So I watched the video, and the video really is an interview with one of the founders of Caravan ID. So I don't propose to go into all the ins and outs of uh, how he came up with it and all the frequently asked questions that are there. But I, I was interested, really, because I wanted to see how it might work for motorhomes. Because there were a couple of uh, things on there. I just thought, hmm, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, I thought I'd give it a go. So I've bought a kit and uh, received the kit last week after we got back from our little trip. And I'll show you what's in the kit. But first of all, I want to show you the website. And uh, because I think that probably sort of um, explains it a bit better than than perhaps I can. So let's have a look at the website. Right, so here's the website. Obviously you've got a home page, Caravan ID. It was founded by a ex-member of, uh, of the police force and he wanted a way really to sort of identify caravans. Now I know there's something called VinChip and I've actually got VinChip fitted to this van. It comes as standard with this van. But I think what you've got on this is it probably explains what it's all about. What you do is you get a number and the number is a, is fixed to the back of your van, caravan or motorhome, and it's fixed to the roof. So it's an easy way to identify your caravan and motorhome. So it says, can you describe your van without describing it anyone else's? Well, yeah, if my van was stolen, I would say uh, look for a Swift Contiki Sport 574 uh, you could probably have the registration numbers, which the plates they'd probably changed anyway. And really, it's about making the police's job easy, I guess. And what you have is you can have an app on your phone and you can look up this number that's on the back of the caravan or motorhome. And it will, it will give you access to um, whose van it is. So if it was stolen, it's a quick way of checking what's happened to that van. And I think it's it goes one step further, or quite a bit further, than VINCHIP, because although I've got a sticker on the window over here that says what what the VIN number is on the van, it's not something you can spot from a motorway bridge. And that's the difference, I think, with this system. So let's have a look. It's all about um, CID, Caravan ID. And it, it's saying there, it's to make as many people as possible aware of a theft of a van, give them some way to recognise your van, uh, and not a similar one because there's going to be quite a few Swift Contigu Sports on the road, and give an efficient method for uh, reporting to the police any sightings of that van. Yeah, so like it says, that you're not gonna, they're not going to be looking for a white Bailey Pegasus with red and black stripes, there's literally thousands of them on there. Now, there's probably hundreds of Contiki Sports as well. So what do you get? You get a visible sticker, highly visible sticker, and it's not easily removed. And that goes on the back of your van, a rear decal, and the roof decal, and there are wind, there's a windscreen sticker, and there's window stickers. So I'll be adding to them my window sticker count. So they up to, you can have up to 13 stickers and they say that they're going to add VIN and chassis number lookups as well. So that's really what it is. And I think the key thing about this video is the more people that join this, the better it's going to work. So if I can, you know, if you like the idea and you decide to join, then it's going to help promote the scheme and anything that helps us recover any stolen vans or, or prevents theft in the first place got to be a great thing. So, you know, what would you be looking for? This is where, where, where I started thinking, what's the difference between caravans and motorhomes? So if a caravan's stolen, 
it, it might have been in storage, might have been there for over winter or something, and suddenly it's gone missing. So at least you can say, well, it shouldn't be on the road. With a motorhome, you might have popped down to the shops in it. Um, so a little bit of a difference there. So it says, what do you look for if a, if a caravan stolen, missing number plates, no trailer lights, obvious sort of things to look for. Motorhomes, you might look into some of the bit more subtle, damage to door locks or windows. Um, Travelling at strange times, not many of us drive in the middle of the night. Um, erratic driving, you might not be used to driving it. And possibly if you see someone somewhat younger than me, you might think it's a bit strange. And literally, if that was the case and you saw this motorhome being driven down the road by someone perhaps a bit younger, the two tough looking guys in the front, you might think that's a bit odd. But if you look at the number and you look, you put it in your phone, you can find out what's happened. And you might find, oh, that's been stolen. And that's the key to this system, I think. And you can help report the incidents. Um, as a lookup, this works probably better on on the app. You've got to do, but do it on here. So we'll do a lookup six. You hit submit, and it says it's off road. And uh, for caravans, it can say who's what vehicle should be towing it. So you've seen it being towed by a beaten up old Ford Transit. And there's a messenger on there, so you can send messaging. Uh, and it, there's also a thing how to join as well. Now this is important because apparently on here, on, on this website, there's 900 people who've registered but haven't joined. Now what I think they're, they're doing is they're trying to see if this is going to catch on, possibly, or perhaps they're thinking, well, they can look for my van if it gets stolen. Well, I think if you had a number on the back and a number on the roof, there's less chance of it being stolen in the first place. So joining is free, uh, sorry, yeah. Registering is free, joining costs 85 pounds. And there's no, and it's a one-off. And then you're providing some sort of information about um, who you are basically, and that's stored securely on a database. And you need proof of ownership. So you need something like your V5 document or insurance document. So you'll be telling people what type of van it is, what make, model, year of van, chassis number, registration number, uh, the van status, and you can change that. You can change it so you say it's off-road, it's in storage, it's in a garage, whatever. And you can update your information. There's a whole load of FAQs here. So what I suggest you do, if you're interested in this, is go to the Caravan ID dot com website and have a look at the FAQs. All sorts of questions there that I think have probably been, been answered. So I won't bore you with all of that. But there is a list on here and this is where I say a lot of people are, let me get this right, are registering but are not joining. And sadly, there's a number of vans that have been posted on here that have been stolen. Now, I don't know, the honest truth, I don't know if these have got numbers on them, but surely if they had a big prominent number on them, it might make it easier to find them. So how many Swift Conquerors do you see on the road? Or even Chawson Flash? and you can report a theft. But yeah, I encourage you, if you like what you see, register, but join. And uh, I don't think £85 is a huge amount of money if it stops your motorhome being stolen. So I'm going to have a look at what's in the pack now. Like I say, I'll leave you to have a look at the website and I'll leave a link to Martin's video up here and you can have a look at that as well. Right, it all comes in a cardboard tube and it's assigned for, so when I got back there was a little note <laughs> sitting on my uh, doormat and I had to go and collect it. 
There we go, let's pull everything out. Right, these are all the stickers. These are the stickers for inside. And I've chosen a number. You can choose your own number as long as the number's available. And uh, I've just chosen a random number. So my van now has a random number. Some more stickers, some bigger stickers. I think that's the inside windscreen sticker with the number on it. There's a registration card, so it's got all the details uh, on there. My um, vehicle number, the chassis number, what sort of uh, vehicle it is, and my unique caravan ID number. So if you see that number on the road, that's me. And you can give us a wave. So the slightly bigger numbers, these are the ones that are going to go on the roof. So you can see they're quite big. So these are the numbers for the back. Now I've asked for it to be in red. You can choose any sort of colour. And there's some instructions. All nicely curled up. But <laughs> oh, I might have to iron that to straighten it out. So it tells you how to fit it. And you've got some masking tape. And you've got a hinge. Put, you know, okay. I'll go into that. Oh, I'll have a read of that because I haven't had a look at that yet. But uh, I will read that. Yeah, so I think what I'll do is I'll have a read of the instructions. If we can find a break in the weather, and it seems to have stopped raining now, maybe we'll go and fit them. Right, it's a couple of days later, and I've now got some masking tape. Um, the other thing I've found useful, and I've, I've, I've fitted three of these now, so I'm sort of getting a bit of a technique. The other thing I've found very useful is a small pair of scissors and a Boots Advantage card. Other loyalty cards are available. I'm using this as my squeegee. And here's the transfer sticker. Now, I must admit, I'm finding this a little bit nerve-wracking fitting this, because you only really get sort of one chance to fit it. And they are very difficult to remove once they're on there. So let me try and take you through it. I'll stick you on the window, and uh, you can watch it being, being fitted first step is to cut a bit of masking tape. Here's the transfer sticker and its number is going to be reversed so you can see it from the outside. And what I've been doing is on one end the instructions tell you to fit masking tape to both ends but also to create a hinge in the middle. It's difficult to sort of really film this, but so what I've had to do is make sure I create this hinge. Do you see? Do you see the one there on that? And I'm just trying to make sure that the hinge doesn't include the one and doesn't include the three. So somewhere between the the one and the three in the middle there, that's my hinge, as they call it. I think this is the trickiest bit, it's actually trying to get it, I'm trying to line it up with the middle of the window, so I'm using the catch in the middle to line up the middle and trying to get it level before I press the masking tape into place there. And I'm going to go outside and just check that's level. So I'm pretty happy that's level. Now what it tells you to do is to remove the backing tape now. See that's trying to move there, so move the backing tape here. Which is the backing tape is the one that's closest to the window. And that and the bit I'm pulling back is the one that has the numbers on it. And this is where I find it quite difficult because the numbers are sticking behind. What's happening is the number three is sticking to the backing tape. It's meant to come away on the transfer tape. 
got a little scalpel here. Just see if I can free that off. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, rather than trying to tear away, I'm going to cut it where the five is. So I'm just going to cut this backing tape there. That's it. And then what it tells you to do is grab hold of it, keep it taut and push it that way. So at least I've then got the four and the five in place. Do that. And then what we do is we take the other bit I found difficult. It's even more difficult trying to film this. You know, the, oh. masking tape is sticking to the transfer tape. Oh, for goodness sake. Look at the masking tape. Do the same with the other bit of masking tape. The trouble is, I think the masking tape's too sticky now. That's it. Right. See this number five, it doesn't want to come off the I mean, backing tape. Wow, that was really difficult. Then what you're supposed to do then is pull it tight and push that along. There. Right, what I've got now is I've got the number stuck on there and you're meant to leave it now for 10 minutes before you peel off the transfer tape. So it says to let it cure and it says to spend some time just making sure these are really stuck down. I'm just and get right up. down just the bigger if this was a bigger um, decal then you might danger you might get some air bubbles in there but these are so small I just hope the bigger transfer stickers are going to be easier to use and uh, this is one that's been on there for over 10 minutes so get on you've got quite a long end at this end to get hold of and what you've got to be careful of is pulling it back almost you'll try and get it almost parallel and I think it's easier if you just put your thumb on it just pull it back horizontal like that that comes off quite easily then right the pack that says it comes with 10 well, 10 window stickers plus the one up the front and I noticed that uh, there are eight small stickers, but I've also got two of these large ones. And I rang um, Caravan ID to find, well, I messaged Caravan ID to find out what these are. And these are actually for the front of a caravan, really, to make it a bit more obvious. Um, I had customer feedback and they wanted something that was a bit more obvious at the front of the caravan so these are sort of a 
halfway house I guess really so you'd have something at your, on your front windows of your caravan now I could I'm thinking I might fit one to this window yeah one thing to watch with this sticker is it's very sticky and actually stuck on before I'd actually managed to get it straight so it's ended up a little bit cockeyed but then some of my other stickers are a bit cockeyed as well never mind We'll take this one off yet, but I decided to go with the bigger sticker there. Can't really see it that well in the camera, but it does show up quite well. Another one. That one. It started raining again so um, it's going to be another day before I manage to get to fit the big stickers. So this one, that's going to go on the back of the van. And this one, that's going on the roof. So I suppose the idea is that could be seen from a helicopter from some distance. So any tips for fitting these stickers? Um, well I think if you follow the instructions pretty well to the letter uh, you should be all right it is a little bit fiddly and it's a little bit nerve-wracking but uh, they do go on all right they, even though sometimes the numbers look like they're going to stick to the um, backing tape not the transfer tape but if you use a little scalpel or a little sharp blade or something just to sort of tweak them as they go or as they come off it should be all right funny enough the easiest thing is actually getting the uh, the transfer tape off that just peels away you just pull it you know straight at an angle and it comes away and the other thing is yeah um, try and get them level um, you can stick them on with the masking tape and check their level but uh, certainly when I get to the bigger sticker I'm going to be marking it out on the roof I don't really want that to be a, at a cockeyed angle at all but so far if I can do it anyone can do it so there you go you believe I washed this a couple of days ago? Anyway, that's roughly where it's going to go. On that side.
Now I've sent another sticker, caravan with the internet address caravanid.com and I think that's meant to go under the number that's going on the back. I wanted something that identifies what the number's about so people could look it up you know on their phone or something. 27 27 so I've measured a line across there use some So I think this is a great system. Um, the upsides of it are it's a visible deterrent and um, unlike the VIN chip which you uh, hardly know is there basically you can see this from quite a distance off and police could see it in their helicopters and you can see it on the back of the van. So in that respect it should be a good theft deterrent. What are the downsides? Well, downside is I think it's mainly to do with the window stickers. They're a little bit fiddly to fit, and I, had, I did struggle a little bit. I think, as you can see in the video, and actually getting them off that uh, backing tape. Um, but if you're careful, and they all went on. I didn't. I didn't have any major disasters with it. The, <laughs> the ones on the roof are a lot easier to do because they're, they're just so much bigger, and uh, and you know, they, it went on fine. So. I do wonder if there's scope really for them tying in with people who fit stickers for a living may, or dealers or something like that. Maybe they can do something along that lines. If people want to pay for fitting, that might be an option. Uh, it did also say they had got a squeegee and um, some masking tape in the instructions that didn't actually have that in, in the pack. So uh, I'm told again that they, they're looking at that. They've only been around for three months, so this is a very new system, so you might not have heard of it already. I know Martin's done his video, John Feeney's going to be doing a video as well, so watch out for that. And uh, I think you'll be hearing a lot more about it. Now you're bound to have some questions about it, I know that, and I'm not the expert here, you know, you really need to, to, talk, to the, talk to the people at Caravan ID. They've got a really good website, I think that's excellent and uh, there's a lot of uh, questions are answered on there in the FAQ section so have a look at that. It answered a lot of my questions I think and uh, like I say they are listening to what people say so it's well worth having a look at that. So what did you think of it? Is it something you, it's worth buying? It's £85, that's a lifetime subscription. Now £85 will, these days will buy you a tank of diesel. It used to be 100 didn't it? I know but uh, £85 will buy you a full tank of diesel and I don't think that's bad value for a lifetime subscription and protection of your van. So what do you think? Is it worth it? Is there anything that puts you off? Are there any sort of downsides or things that sort of might hold you back, might stop you joining? Let me know, um, leave a comment below and uh, I'm sure that a caravan idea will be watching this video with interest. 
So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification icon and uh, you'll get updates uh, when we release an update. Now there might be more updates about Caravan ID, so it might be worth just following for that if, uh, if you think this is interesting. I think it's a great product. I, I really do think it's, it's good and uh, it's well worth having a look at. So like I say, thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next one.